I remember there were so many trees. And everything looked so green and full of spring. I'm Ellen Wade, daughter of Sylvanus and Betsy Wade. In 1844, we left our home near Fort Atkinson and moved about 100 miles to the north. We carried all we had in a caravan of three wagons, including my mother's organ and my cat Pixie and her new litter. We had more children than kittens. There was my father, mother, six sisters, and three brothers. East of Fond du Lac, slashes on the trees marked the road. And it's a good thing, because we couldn't always find it. We were stuck many times. And my father and brothers had to chop down trees to get us through. The last five miles took half a day. On Sunday, April 28, 1844, we arrived in what would soon be known as Greenbush. I was six years old. This was long ago, and most of Wisconsin was still wild country. Wisconsin was an adventure, sometimes a very beautiful adventure to a girl like me. My father, Sylvanus Wade, came from out east in Massachusetts. He was what came to be called a Yankee, not interested in farming or hunting, more of a businessman. His desire to see Greenbush grow encouraged him to buy land and to eventually open an inn between Sheboygan on Lake Michigan and Fond du Lac at the foot of Lake Winnebago. There was talk of developing the road running the 40 miles between the two. A log cabin was our first home. As we children grew, father added new rooms for more space. I can remember, it was one night after dinner, going outside with mother. The forest surrounded the house, and we could look up and see the sky through the clearings where the trees had been cut for the house. She said the sky looked so small through those little clearings that she could hold all the stars in her apron. That first winter was a cold time and very lonely. Our nearest neighbors lived 10 miles away. And the forest had packs of gray wolves that frightened us terribly. Father and mother spent many nights comforting us with reading or telling us about their plans for Greenbush. Of course, there were Indians, too. As settlers traveled to Greenbush, the Indians came around more to trade or visit. In 1845, my sister Julia and her husband Charles Robinson moved to Greenbush. He planned to operate a mill near our house. He and my father worked to civilize the wilderness, build a town. As the road was improved, we saw more travelers and coaches. We rented rooms to some and fed many more. In 1848, we had a big celebration. The whole town did as Wisconsin became the 30th state. My father always kept an eye out for chances to sell land. He'd ask people on the road, where are you heading? Some replied, to Wisconsin. If they looked hardworking and prepared for life here in the North Woods, he'd tell them they were here, invite them in to relax, and consider some land in wonderful Greenbush. If they looked ill-suited to building a town, well, my father would say, mm, Wisconsin, have a safe journey. 1850 was the most exciting year I remember. I was 11. My father decided to build a new house. Everyone used to call our old place the halfway house. Our new one, three stories tall, was called Wade House. With 27 rooms, it was the finest dwelling for miles around. Father's business boomed. We even got a telegraph in Greenbush. 
The same year, crews started building a plank road between Sheboygan and Fond du Lac. They were called farmer's highways, so farmers driving heavy wagons wouldn't sink down in the mud. The plank surface was then covered with gravel. They struggled mightily for two years to complete that road. More folks were settling all the time, and we just had to have a better road. The government census in 1850 counted Greenbush at 180 souls, and I knew them all. I used to sit on the porch with my sisters and watch the wagons and coaches rumble by, sometimes more than 200 in a day. It was a special place, that early Greenbush. My parents were proud of what they'd done, both for our family and for the town. And in 1854, it looked like good fortune was coming down the road towards us once again as plans moved forward for a railroad line right through Greenbush. I am Theodore Herling, Jr., son of Theodore and Wilhelmine Herling. In 1854, when I was 14, I came to America from Leipzig, Germany, with my family. My father was a sawyer in Germany. Two years later, we headed for Wisconsin, where my father, Theodore, bought a sawmill in Greenbush from William Holloway, who got it from Charles Robinson, the son-in-law of Sylvanus Wade. We worked hard at farming, millwork, and skilled trades, the work we knew best. And the sawmill provided us a good living. We fixed up the dam, hauling mud and boulders in the heat of the summer. My father's brothers, Hermann and Constantine, soon settled in Greenbush, and they helped in our labors. As more people arrived, the Herling sawmill was a, a local source of wood for homes, so our business did well enough. In fact, the large new dam my father built in 1870 served the community for the next 40 years. But no railroad ever came to Greenbush. It went two miles north to Glen Beulah, and Greenbush began to decline. Oh, we all saw what was happening. Fewer settlers were coming. Greenbush's lack of a railroad kept it isolated. Time was moving on, and Greenbush was not. I am Wesley Young, a grandson of Jacob Young, who founded the Young Carriage Works in Sheboygan. My family also came to America from Germany. When my grandfather arrived in 1854, he found Sheboygan very much like the towns he'd left behind. It was an engineering and manufacturing center, too, and that's why my grandfather chose it. He was a wagon maker, young and ambitious. In just two years, he had his own company. Soon, he was producing 25 wagons each year. By 1870, he built 85 full-sized wagons, along with dozens of sleds, buggies, and cutters. I was born in 1899. By that time, my father and uncle owned the company. This was my playground, and I learned the wagon-making trade. The Young Carriage Company became a respected name throughout northeastern Wisconsin. By the end of the 19th century, cities were growing, and the demand for carriages increased, both for commerce and for leisure time. The Midwest, just before the turn of the century, was a dynamic place. There were special wagons for use on Wisconsin farms. Heavy industrial wagons for transport of raw materials and finished products. And of course, fire engines to ensure the public safety. Phaetons, one of the fancier ways to get around. The Brome, the Mercedes Benz of the day. The buggy, every man's vehicle for all purposes. The company served the growing society and fell victim to it. A few companies were working on a new carriage. 
and it didn't need a horse. Some companies kept up with these new ideas. Most could not. The Young Carriage Company of Sheboygan shut down in 1917. My father could see this coming. I followed his advice and became an accountant. But I had carriages in my blood. In 1939, I began restoring some of the child-sized carriages my grandfather had made for his family. Pretty soon, I moved on to restore some of the full-size carriages the company had produced in its heyday. I remembered the smells and sounds of my grandfather's workshop, the conversations of the German craftsmen and the heat of the forges. For 47 years, I collected and restored this heritage of my family. I wanted to keep it preserved and show it to the people, since it's their history too. In 1968, the museum housing this collection opened at Wade House in Greenbush. The automobile might have claimed a victim by its efficiency, but I think these carriages still have the edge in beauty and character. Wisconsin had almost 600 inns. Just a handful remain. Wisconsinites drove thousands of wagons and carriages. Only a few survived. We're lucky, because what has lasted is some of the best of the past. Today, three people have given us a look into their lives. Ellen Wade Carey has shown us the excitement of being a six-year-old in the earliest days of Frontier, Wisconsin. Theodore Hurling has talked about the hard work of building a farm and sawmill. And Wesley Young has shared with us the twilight of an era in transportation. The Wade House site, along with the Young Carriage Museum, breathes fresh life into Wisconsin's past. This historic location shows how the state was born and raised from a time when a walk outside could show you an apron full of stars to the time when the motor car came chugging down the road by the quiet little town named Greenbush. Let us always remember that there was a time in this country when even a whole day of life was not taken for granted much less water, shelter, and a safe night's sleep. Now, by reason of this uniquely bountiful heritage, we take for granted too much. We assume, we expect, we insist. Nowhere else in the world is this possible. To take this heritage unthinkingly for granted is a first step to losing it. Each of us is a trustee of the past. 
we have the important task of living up to our inheritance and adding something to it. <laughs>